بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. Welcome to the Sira class. We're moving now, inshallah, to year seven of Hijra. After the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam returned to Medina from Al Hudaybiyah, and after he sent messages to all the kings and the rulers around the Arabia and outside, he moved to another important step. He prepared the army and he moved 100 miles to the north, to Khaybar. Khaybar was the center for the Jews outside Medina. We remember that there were three tribes in Medina. They were all expelled. The Jews of Banu Qaynuqa, the Jews of Banu Nadir, and the Jews of Qurayza. The Jews of Qurayza, most of them were killed. But there were other Jews, the Jews of Banu Qaynuqa. When they were expelled, where did they go? To Khaybar. The Jews of Banu Nadir, where did they go? To Khaybar. So the Prophet وسلم, after the truce of Hudaybiyah, after everything was taken care of, he moved to those Jews. And that was in year 7 of Hijrah. Now, why Khaybar? Wasn't it enough for the Prophet وسلم, to expel the Jews from Medina? Why he is attacking the Jews? Isn't that transgression? Isn't it enough if a Jewish came and he said, isn't it enough that three tribes were in Medina, they were all expelled? Isn't it enough that the Jews of Banu Qurayza were killed? Why he is keeping following them? Why this shed of blood? What do you say? Yes. Yeah, actually now they are all gathered in Khaybar. What do you think they are doing there? They are sitting peacefully and acknowledging the mistakes they did, or they are plotting and conspiring against the Prophet ﷺ. That's what they were doing actually, and everyone was expecting there is a war will take place. If the Prophet ﷺ did not go, they are coming. They took that Khaybar, that city, as a center for their conspiracies. Where did Banu Nadir come to Quraysh from? They came from Khaybar in the battle of Al-Khandaq. So, the Prophet ﷺ had to take that step. He had to take care of that issue of Khaybar. And again, it was relatively far, but it was not that far. Only 100 miles away in the north of Medina. So the Prophet ﷺ, he had to take care of that issue. Actually, it was half the distance between Medina and Mecca. So there was a danger there. The Prophet ﷺ could not ignore that. So the Prophet ﷺ prepared the army, and again, as usual, the Prophet ﷺ took the proper steps, which is trying to conceal his destination, which is trying to hide his intention, especially from his enemies, just to save as much casualties as possible. And another step the Prophet ﷺ took, which was taking only the companions who took the pledge with the Prophet ﷺ in Al-Hudaybiyah. There were companions during Al-Hudaybiyah who took the pledge with the Prophet ﷺ. What was the subject of that pledge in Al-Hudaybiyah? Do you remember? What was the pledge? Hmm? No, the Prophet ﷺ with the companions in Al-Hudaybiyah. Now there was a truce, but before the truce there was a pledge taken from the companions. Exactly. When, when they hear that Uthman Adilan was killed, they took a pledge for what? To fight until whether they are victorious or they get killed. How many of those companions were there? There were 1,400 companions. 1,400, approximately 1,400. And all of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the glad tidings. Anil now, that was an advantage that there were no hypocrites. And if there were any hypocrites, they did not take the pledge. One of them was there. His name is Al-Jadd bin Qais. They told him, come and take the pledge. He said, I am looking for my camel. So the Prophet ﷺ, he did not take with him in that battle except the ones who gave the pledge. We learn from this lesson also that you caused us 
some losses in the past, you withdrew, not anymore. Now we know what to do. So they were prevented from coming with the Messenger Wasallam. Especially many of the hypocrites, they were allies to the Jews. And they helped them. Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, he helped the Jews. They deserved killing, but he intervened and he interceded for them. So they were not killed, but they were only expelled. So that was an important step the Prophet ﷺ took. Another step the Prophet ﷺ took, which is always the case, he divided the army. We have the Muhajireen and we have the Ansar. Within the Ansar we have Al-Aus and we have Al-Khazraj. There is a leader and on top of the entire army there is also a leader. Now Khaybar, again, it was the center for the Jews. And it was not an easy place to invade. It was very well protected. And there were three main citadels or fortresses. And each one was very strong. Now even in Medina, it was difficult for the Prophet ﷺ to penetrate, to break through the fortress of Banu Quraidha or Banu Nadir. And this is even more difficult. That's why the Prophet ﷺ tried his best to conceal the news. So the Prophet ﷺ arrived and the Jews were shocked to see that the Prophet ﷺ, he is already here. So there was a siege on their fortress in Khaybar, but again it was difficult. Some of the Muslims were killed, some of the Jews were killed, some of them offered individual battle. There was a famous hero for the Jews. His name was Marhab. He came out calling for an individual fighting. And Amr ibn al-Akwa went to fight him. Who's Amr ibn al-Akwa? Didn't you hear that name before, ibn al-Akwa? He's the, the brother of Salama. Ibn al-Akwa. Who's Salama? Ibn al-Akwa? He's the fastest companion. What else? In al hudaybiyah he had a unique virtue. He took the pledge three times. Amr ibn al-Akwa is the brother of Salama. Amr radiallahu anh, when they were marching to Khaybar, he was saying in loud voice some lines of poetry. You know when you have army and you want to entertain them. So he was saying aloud. So the Prophet ﷺ heard him and he liked what he's saying. He said, who's saying this? They told him, Amr ibn al-Akwa. He said, Yarhamuhullah. May Allah show mercy to him. So the companions were sad. They said, oh messenger of Allah, if you kept him alive for a while. Why they said that? Because every companion, the Prophet ﷺ, prayed for him for mercy. He was martyred. So they knew that Amr ibn al-Aqwa will be martyred soon because the Prophet ﷺ prayed for him. He said, Yarhamuhullah. Now, we all say to each other when you sneeze, Yarhamukallah. But it's different when it comes from the mouth of the Messenger ﷺ. So they knew that he will die soon. So Amr ibn al-Aqwa volunteered to go and to fight Marhab. And Amr was a strong man. But he had a short sword. So he was fighting and one swing he took with his sword, it returned to him. It injured his knee. It came to his knee and it was stuck in his knee. And he died because of that. So Amr ibn al-Aqwa, he martyred. Some people started saying that, oh, he killed himself. So Salama came crying to the Messenger وسلم, saying that, look at what people are saying. My brother killed himself. The Prophet وسلم, told him, no, he has the reward of two people. The martyr and so he, he got two rewards. So he got the glad tidings from the Messenger وسلم. Then Ali radiallahu anh went and he killed Marhab. Then his brother came, the brother of Marhab came. One companion came and he killed him also. So the Jews, some of them were killed. And the companions got the glad tidings that usually when you kill the kuffar in the individual fighting, that's an indication that you will be able to invade and to penetrate through their fortresses. Then the Prophet ﷺ told the companions that tomorrow, inshallah, Allah will give them the victory. 
next day, the Prophet ﷺ called on Ali. What is Ali? So they told him he is complaining. His eyes has, they have infection. So he brought him, Ali was brought to the Messenger ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ spitted in the eyes of Ali and he cured them. So then he told him, go and fight them. He went and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the victory to the Muslims on the hand of Ali radiallahu anhu. The last night, the Prophet ﷺ told them, tomorrow the banner will be given to a Muslim whom Allah and his messenger love, and he loves Allah and his messenger. So it's not only the leadership, but also Allah and his messenger love that man, and that man loves Allah and his messenger. Everyone from the Muslims, they wish to be that man. Umar radiallahu anhu says, I never wished for leadership. He did not want to be a leader, except in that night. Because the Prophet ﷺ witnessed that Allah and his messenger loved that man. So he wanted to be that man. But it was Ali radiallahu an. So Ali radiallahu an was able to fight and to open. And there are some narrations. It says that he was able to carry the door with his own hand. And the door, it's not like our doors. It was a high, heavy door. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the victory to the Muslims. Once the Jews knew that the Muslims penetrated and they entered their fortress, they surrendered. They agreed to surrender without fighting. So Khaybar was opened. It became for the Muslims. And they agreed with the Messenger وسلم, and they requested to remain on the land. The land was very rich land with lots of types of harvest and agriculture. So they told the Messenger وسلم, you won't be able to use it, utilize the fruits and the plants. Keep us and we will agree on percentage. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ agreed. So scholars learned from that many lessons in the fiqh and in the chapter of money. What do, what do you do if you open the land? Do you keep the people if you know that they will do a better job? Do you take it from them? What do you do? So the Prophet ﷺ agreed with them on an agreement. But the outcome was Muslims were victorious. And that was another indication that all things are prepared now for Muslims. Even the kuffar in Quraysh, they were shocked. They never expected that the Prophet ﷺ will be able to open Khaybar. Khaybar was very well known that it is a difficult, very protected city. And actually they had a bet with some Muslims who were still in Mecca, who will defeat the other. The Muslims, of course, they said, the Prophet ﷺ will defeat them. The Kuffar said, the Jews will defeat them. And one of the Muslims who accepted Islam recently, he told the Messenger ﷺ, O Messenger of Allah, do not disclose now the victory. Allow for me to go to Mecca because I have some money. I am afraid if they knew that you were victor, they won't give me my money. So allow for me to lie just to get my money. So the Prophet ﷺ allowed for him. He went there, he got his money, he told first the people that, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi lost and the kuffar were happy. Al-Abbas Radiallahu Anh, the uncle of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi he was in Mecca at that time. He was sad and he told him, what are you saying? So he told him, wait for me after three days. They agreed on a secluded place to meet and when they met, he told him, don't worry, the victory was given to your cousin, but do not disclose it now until I leave. At that time, the news came to Mecca that the Prophet ﷺ lost. So they used to see Al-Abbas happy because Al-Abbas knew from that man that that was not the case indeed. He just wanted to get his money. So they see Al-Abbas and Al-Abbas is happy. They don't know why. They say, MashaAllah, you are a very patient man. You know that your cousin lost and you are happy. But after three days, he told them that actually what happened is Muhammad ﷺ was victor. And he defeated the Jews. And the kuffar were upset because of that. Now, again, the Prophet ﷺ, the Muslims are gaining more and more power. When the Prophet ﷺ entered Khaybar, one of the Jewish women, she prepared a meal. And she invited the Prophet ﷺ for that meal. And the Prophet ﷺ responded. The Prophet ﷺ was a very simple, friendly person. He was a human being. 
and he wanted to gain the hearts of people. So he, he accepted that invitation. She asked what part the Prophet ﷺ loves most. So she, she was told that the shoulder. She poisoned that sheep and she put most of the poison in the shoulder. So when she invited the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ came and he wanted to eat. He took one bite and he said, this sheep is telling me that she is poisoned. And he threw the meat and he called the woman and he asked her why you did this she said I wanted to verify whether you are a prophet or not because if you are a liar you won't know whether this sheep is poisoned or not and we will get rid of you if you are a messenger it should not harm you but it actually affected the messenger وسلم, because he got sick and later on three years later when the Prophet ﷺ got sick, he said that the meal I had in Khaybar is coming back again, affecting me. And now it is time for me to die. That's what the Prophet ﷺ said in his last days. So it actually affected the Prophet ﷺ, even though he forgave her. When she said that, he forgave her. But one of the companions, Al-Bara' bin Ma'roor radiallahu he was killed because he ate with the Messenger وسلم, And he was poisoned and he was killed. So some narrations say the Prophet ﷺ killed her, not because she tried to, to poison him, but because one of the companions was killed. And there is qisas. The equal punishment is she should be killed. And the Prophet ﷺ did that. The Prophet ﷺ, even though she attempted to kill him, he forgave her. Also, when the Prophet ﷺ entered Khaybar, Safiya radiallahu anha, she was the wife of their leader. And few nights earlier, she saw in her dream that the moon has fallen in her lap. So she told her wife that, uh, her husband, and her husband slapped her on her face. He told her, what do you think? Are you going to get the king of the Arab? Because that was the interpretation of the dream. She saw the moon in her lap. So it, it meant that a great thing will happen to her. But she did not know that she will become the wife of the Messenger وسلم. And this also happened. After the Prophet وسلم took her, he married her and she told him about her dream. And now that's the interpretation for her dream. Another important incident happened. If you remember earlier, the Prophet وسلم sent messengers to kings. And one of those kings was the Abyssinian ruler. Who was the messenger that was sent to him? Who's, which companion, if you know? Or you forgot? Huh? Amr. Which Amr? Amr ibn al-As? No. Which Amr? Amr ibn Umayyad Damri, radiallahu an. He went to Ashama, radiallahu an, Najashi. And when Amr returned, he did not return alone. Who came with him? The Muslims who were there for long years. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an, other companions, including Um Habiba. Who is Um Habiba? The wife of the Messenger, وسلم, right? Where are they? All that time they were in Abyssinia. So they returned. But when they returned, some of them came to Medina to find that the Prophet وسلم, is not there. Some of them continued to Khaybar. Ja'far came and he met with the Prophet وسلم, in Khaybar. But it was already opened. So the Prophet وسلم, was very happy and he said, I don't know which one should I be happy more with. The opening of Khaybar or the coming of Ja'far. He was very happy because of that. Now the relatives of the Messenger وسلم, the companions, his wife, Um Habiba, that he hasn't seen for 10 years. He married her while she was abroad. She was there. Now she came. Also, one companion accepted Islam at that time. Very famous companion. He came to Medina while the Prophet ﷺ was not there. And he accepted Islam. He remained there until the Prophet ﷺ came. Who was that companion? You all know him. No, not Khalid. Khalid, not yet. Hmm. 
what do you think? Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he accepted Islam. He came to the Messenger وسلم, in year 7 of Hijrah. It was a late year, look. Yet, he narrated most of the ahadith from the Messenger وسلم. That's the blessing of Allah. He came and he remained there for only like 3 years. Yet, he narrated most of the ahadith of the Messenger وسلم. Because he was dedicated. He came and he remained with the Prophet وسلم, all the time. Then, now, this is year 7. And remember, a year earlier, the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims, they agreed with the Kuffar of Quraysh to come next year. So now it is time to fulfill that thing. But before that, the Prophet ﷺ sent another military expedition, which was called Datul Riqa'ah. The expedition of Datul Riqa'ah against Ghatafan. Which tribe is Ghatafan, if you remember? Yeah, one of the Arab tribes. What about them? Yes, that's correct. They were involved in the battle of the trench and they were causing, again, trouble for the Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ wanted to secure that area. He went there when they heard that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions are coming, they ran away. So this area was also secured. In the way back, the Prophet ﷺ was sleeping with the army. The Prophet ﷺ slept underneath a tree and he hung his sword. One of the kuffar came and he took the sword of the Messenger ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ woke up. The Prophet ﷺ alone, unarmed, and this man with the sword. So he told the Prophet ﷺ, who will protect you from me now? The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah. Then the man said, who will protect you from me now? The, man, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said again, Allah. Three times. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying Allah. And on the third time, the sword fall from the hand of that man. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Prophet ﷺ took the sword. And he told the man, now who will protect you from me? <laughs> so the man said, oh messenger of Allah, show mercy to me. <clears throat> now he, he remembered that the Prophet ﷺ is merciful. What do you think the Prophet ﷺ did? He forgave him. He did not kill him. Look how many times people tried to abuse, to assassinate, to kill the Messenger ﷺ, and the Prophet ﷺ forgave him. We need to show these meanings to Muslims and to non-Muslims. Many people, they don't know about that. Now, lots of people, they talk about the Pope, the ex-Pope, when a man tried to assassinate him and he forgave him, he visited him in the prison. Prophet ﷺ did not do anything for the media or to let the people know or to show off. That was his nature. He forgave people. And this is one of them. He was forgiven by the Messenger ﷺ. The details of the Battle of Khaybar are all mentioned in the book. Actually, it is one of the places where an incident is very well detailed. So you need to go back to the book. There are many details we skipped over, but you need to know. And I may ask you about them. Just like I asked you about a few things we did not mention. We did not cover. Thumama bin Uthal, the leader of Yamama. I did not mention that. Al-As, the husband of Zainab. So you, you need to read the book. Go back and you have reading. Now it is time for the Umrah. Umrah al-Qada. When it happened in the Al-Qa'da, just one year, after the truce of Hudaybiyah, the Prophet ﷺ took the companions who were with him last year. They came and they performed the Umrah. Of course, the Kuffar agreed with the Messenger ﷺ, so, so they could not prevent him because there was an agreement. But they started telling lies and rumors that the Muslims are coming weak and the battles and living in Medina has weakened them. So the Prophet ﷺ heard that and told the Muslims, whoever is able to show strength, he should do so. And that's why they disclosed and they exposed their right shoulder. And now you know why when we do the tawaf, we cover one shoulder, the left shoulder, and we put the other piece underneath 
the right shoulder. Why we do that during tawaf? Because that's how it started. The kuffar sat observing the Muslims when they came to Mecca. So the Prophet ﷺ told them to show their hands because if you are not sick, your hand will, will be shown and you will see that it is strong. You are not frail, you are not fainting, you are not weak. So they saw that, the kuffar saw that, and they knew that th there is nothing wrong with the Muslims, everything is okay. Also, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions to walk quickly the first three rounds. And that's why we do that until now, when we go to Mecca. The reason behind it, to show the kuffar that there is nothing wrong with them. So the scholars learn that it is always recommended to show the kuffar your strength. You don't allow for them to do anything wrong or to belittle your strength. Show them that you are strong. So the Prophet ﷺ, he performed the Umrah and he was allowed to stay for how many days according to the agreement? Three days. He remained there three days. During those days, they performed the Adhan, the prayer in front of everybody. And the Prophet ﷺ married one of his wives. She was the aunt of Ibn Abbas Who was she? You should know her name. Maymuna bint al-Harith, the aunt of Ibn Abbas. He married, the Prophet ﷺ married Maymuna bint al-Harith radiallahu anha. He proposed to her, so she asked al-Abbas to be her wali, and al-Abbas married her to the Messenger wasallam. Then the Prophet ﷺ returned to Medina. When he returned, al-Walid ibn al-Walid, the brother of Khalid ibn al-Walid, he accepted Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ asked him, what did your brother do? So Al-Walid sent a letter to his brother telling him, isn't it time for you to accept Islam? Isn't that enough? So Khalid came. In the way, he saw Amr ibn al-As. And Amr ibn al-As was going also because he felt that it is time to accept Islam. So he asked Khalid, where are you going? Khalid told him, where are you going? So they knew that they are going in the same direction. In the, in the way also, they met with Uthman ibn Talha. Both of them, radiallahu anhum, they went to the Messenger, وسلم, and they accepted Islam. And the Prophet, وسلم, was happy, very happy because of that. And he told them that, I knew you had rationality, and that should lead you to Islam. And that's why, subhanAllah, anyone who intends sincerely to find the truth, he will find it. He will find it. But Uthman, uh, I'm sorry, Khalid, he wanted to correct what he did. And Amr ibn al-As, he was worried about what he did before. So when they wanted to give a pledge, Amr ibn al-As, he took back his hand. And he asked the Messenger, وسلم, I want to make one condition. So the Prophet وسلم, told him, what that condition? He said, I want my sins to be forgiven. So the Prophet وسلم, told him, didn't you know that Islam will wipe out, will erase all your previous sins? So then Amr ibn al-As, he gave the pledge to the Messenger وسلم, and they all accepted Islam. And we will stop here inshallah. We will continue with the next class with the coming incidents after the Umrah, the makeup Umrah of the Messenger. وسلم. Is there any questions? Any questions? If not, then we'll stop here, inshallah, and we'll see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.